What's up everybody? Welcome back to another Moltman episode. I'm back from New Mexico. Unfortunately, there's not another video from New Mexico. Went coyote hunting with my buddy Dreo and uh, we did not see any, but I brought old Elsie out to the ranch and uh, we're gonna do a little ranch work today. We got some stuff me and my dad got to do. Um, and I'm gonna bring you, bring you guys along with me and I don't know what else we'll get into today, but do a little ranch vlog, do a little ranch vlog style video today. So stay tuned, enjoy, and uh, let's have some fun. So we're setting up and tearing down blinds. Uh, my dad bought a few of these stump blinds a few years ago, and they're absolutely terrible. They're just like panels that, uh, who did all this? Really? Anyway, these stump lines are terrible. They're like panels and there's no top, so if it rains, you're getting wet the whole time. So we're going to take these all down. Um, if you want to buy them, hit me up on Instagram. We will sell them because we don't want them anymore. Uh, and then we're going to set up a, a new pop-up blind and then maybe go look for some good trees to put in uh, a few new stands. If you haven't had Biggs, Taco Bell Supreme, sunflower seeds are missing out. 10 out of 10. So, these are the blinds we're talking about. It's literally just like a half shell and they're snapped together. So, they're just gonna take them apart, put them on the trailer. And if you wanna buy them, hit me up on Instagram. How much? $400 for all of them. If y'all didn't know, we had that huge, another ice storm come through Texas this year. And uh, I was in New Mexico the whole time that we had the ice storm. So it's weird coming back and still seeing snow and ice on the ground. And it's 55, 60 degrees out here. Pretty nuts that we still have ice on the ground. Well, here's another one. But if y'all hear a big machine in the background, we have a mulcher out here. We may get a look at it here in a little bit. But there's, our ranch is covered, if you can tell, covered in cedar trees. And uh, our thoughts on it is all the thick stuff. It's super e easy for these predators, coyotes and stuff, to corner these animals in these big thickets. So we're like zigzagging and checkerboarding a lot of the stuff that's covered in cedars. And uh, just making it a little easier for animals to uh to thrive out here so we have him out here doing that and he's just mulching up cedars for us so i'm gonna get this other blind on here and we're gonna set up a pop-up blind right here cedar eater of texas cedar eater of texas that's what he's called oh ah. Did you get those see-through pop-ups? Unless you set it up. Is that what it is? Yeah. So, I wanna set this up. I'll show you guys setting it up and then I wanna show you what this thing looks like from the inside when it is set up. guys finally figured out how to set that stupid thing up I'm gonna take you inside and show you what it looks like so dad go in there really quick for me so 
So you can't tell that anything is in there. Can't see anything from the outside. Come around here to the inside and bam. You can see everything perfectly. Isn't that awesome? These things are a game changer, I think. I think they make a full wraparound one too, but this one has the back black and back black, black back, whatever you want to say. Black box. Yeah, I know. I think I would too. Still yeah. So these just slide down. We'll leave them up for now, but you have your shooting lanes and then everything else is camoed. So pretty sweet. We're going to brush it in still a little bit and uh, just get it ready for some hunts. But I think that's pretty neat right there. And then another thing I like about it is the back of it doesn't have. A zipper so you're not making a whole bunch of racket getting in and out people talk about critters getting into their blinds but they're gonna get in regardless if you have a zipper or not so you have these clips on here if I can get them to go on so we're gonna stake the corners down brush it in a little bit put some chairs in there should be good to go better than these things I'll show you guys a little bit of what this mulcher is doing so you can see all this old, all this old cedar mulch is stuff he's done within the last two or three years. You can already see it decomposing and just really it helps the whole ranch out. But you see these lanes, these are all old lanes that he's cut. And all this stuff right here, all this red stuff, I don't know what it looks like in the camera, but it looks pretty red to me. Um, that's all fresh mulch cedar. And it will turn to this gray stuff within a year or so it dries out and just decomposes and uh, it's really healthy for everything really so i'm gonna go over here and uh, show you what this machine does can't get super close because it flings objects like hundreds of feet so we'll show you give you an idea of how big this machine is and how quick it can plow through some cedars here you can see the well, he's behind the feeder now, but the front part of that machine has a, just a big rotating saw and it just sticks the cedars out. It's pretty crazy. It's also got a grappling hook so you can grab stuff and, and push it in to where it mulches it up. But you can tell that machine has, it literally has cages around the cab because there's so much stuff that gets thrown around. But you can see all that dust is just mulch that's been being shot out of that machine. So how does he know which cedars to cut? He just we went over saw the slash when the cedar post guys came in, cut all the cedar posts out. They make a huge mess. You can see all that. So that's what that looked like before he got on it. So he'll come through here and then so now the animals have a lot more habitat. They can move in and out. And then a lot of the moisture, the cedar cedars suck moisture like crazy. Yeah, out of and them, they give so. us allergies. I'm about to get them because we're literally inhaling cedar dust right now. Y'all probably can't see it, but it's like a cloud of cedar dust. I'll be uh, watery eyes and sneezing all night tonight. But just want to give y'all a look of how that machine works. Pretty cool. It is a ginormous machine, uh, and it can do some damage pretty quick. Turkeys at the feeder. Heck yeah. There they go. I'm ready for turkey season. Y'all leave in the comments if y'all are ready for some turkey hunt videos. Cause I am ready, for sure. I wanna do some bow hunting turkey hunts this year too. One of them just strutted. I'm gonna see if they gobble. All right guys, so I didn't film this part, but we've had this turkey feeder out here for like 10 years probably. Oh. And we haven't filled it up in probably eight years. Oh. And my dad just put a bunch of sunflower seed in it. We're gonna, we're trying to get these turkeys to stay on our place. Obviously y'all just saw, I and mean, we just saw like four or five toms and a big group of hens. So 
uh, I think it's working, but we're gonna was in this little opening over here, but we are going to move it by this corn feeder because they're hitting the corn feeders a lot too. So set up and uh, move this guy. Hopefully all these turkeys stay in here till turkey season, but we're getting turkeys on camera every single day. So it's looking promising. Hope the turkeys come. So I thought it'd be cool to show you guys one of our sources of water out here on the ranch my dad built. Um, we have, I think we have three or four different ponds on our ranch, but they're all kind of on the front side of the ranch. We don't have much water on the back. So I'm gonna show you how we water our back system. We have this concrete uh, water trough. And it's got a bobber in there. That's run up a pipe. So then that bobber goes off or when it comes up, the water goes below it, then it releases the valve and water is allowed to be drained in. But that's fed by a pipe that goes up to this little tiny shed. And all it is is a water catch system. So the water, obviously when it rains, the water that hits this roof comes down and there's gutters on both sides. And those gutters funnel the water down into this big black tank. And you leave the lever or you leave the valve open on the tank and the bobber basically just feeds itself as it needs it so i don't know how much water we have in it right now but so we're about 550 but to get a to get a tank dug in this quadrant of the the ranch is going to be like 50 grand so i had had them come out and set this thing up i had the tank from the old ranch so a couple grand yeah so this was probably 850 900 bucks and then i, I did the guttering myself the water hose and uh, it's uh, gravity fed. I wonder if any of these animals got in here in the freeze. It's a great place for the animals to get away out of the out of the elements if they wanted to. But yeah, yeah, there's definitely tracks all under here. So maybe we need to. It'd be cool to put a camera on this if we have another big freeze and just see what gets under there. Okay. Got flint. Yeah, we found a few arrowheads out here. There's flint everywhere, but um, there's a lot of natural uh, flint that's not been worked. So it's kind of hard to dig through everything to look for arrowheads. But And we have been finding sheds. My dad found two sheds this morning. So we're going to go ride the ranch a little bit, see if we can find the first sheds of the year, which my dad already did this for this year, but I wanna, I'd like to find some too make old shed crazy jealous is it a stick or a shed it's an old oh it is an old shed you plowed it up what a beaut dang how'd you not see that one in the tractor all right guys we switched over to the electric car we're gonna go do a little shed hunting we had to drop that trailer off and that Kubota is so loud. We got the electric car, we're gonna go do a little shed hunting and we're gonna grab a rifle as well because uh, we still have a problem with pigs and we're gonna go see if we can't find a couple of pigs. It's the middle of the day though, so I don't expect to find any pigs, but I do wanna look for some sheds. Had to come back and change some shoes too because these lacrosse boots are making me sweat. It's the middle of the day here in Texas. It's starting to get hot. So we're gonna, we're gonna crock it. But I also wanted to show you guys the sheds that my dad found this morning. He actually found them whenever he was pulling into the ranch this morning. Uh, and it's a set. I don't know how this one got here. Something dragged it over here. But these are the two sheds. So this one, this drop tine shed, we found actually, it was last year's we found it a couple weeks ago it was under some cedar trees but this is the set that my dad found this morning and this is this year's uh this is this year's sheds he was just really really white horned but 
uh, we have this deer on camera just last week. So he just shed it within the last couple of days, but he's a really wide deer. He's all broken up from fighting this year, but this main beam came out about there as well. So uh, just a nice non-typical, typical deer. But we're gonna go out and see if we can find some more. And then he found this one. When'd you find this one? Uh, it was a couple days ago. Weird looking buck. Man, they're all broken up this year. So he's a young deer, you can tell. He has hardly any mass at all. But he's gonna be a big boy one day. So we're riding around and a bunch of buzzards got up back here in this. See all this ice still on the ground? We're afraid that few animals may have not made it through that ice storm but anyway a bunch of buzzards got up so we're walking back here to see if we can find something because they are clearly on something i think i smell it yeah there's oh that's an armadillo no a live one hear him growling I thought I smelled something. Well, I don't know what it was, but I walked pretty good ways and didn't see anything. I got a few whiffs of stuff a couple times, but every time I walked to it, I never saw anything, so I don't know what it is. Well, I don't know how I didn't see that one. I wasn't looking ahead. Yeah, baby. First shed. Man, that thing, that thing's last year's. Uh, you think so? I don't know. It's already all chewed. I mean, that's fresh, freshly chewed though. Uh, how did shed craters miss that last year then? No, that's got to be this year. But look at that. They're already chewing on it. Yep. That stinks. That's a good buck Hard though. Man. And he is heavy, heavy. That's a sweet buck. That is a heavy, heavy deer right there. Cool. We got one. I I guess they are actually shedding. It wasn't just a fluke that my dad found a set this morning. I love this area. This is this is where Eric, when Eric and Ben came down last year, this is the most productive area right here. This strip of just mesquites and cedars and hardwoods. So maybe we'll find a few more. You ready for dinner? We are home guys and uh, I brought some Oryx home to cook some Oryx for dinner. So we got Oryx eye of round and Oryx sirloin. So fire it up the camp chef and uh, I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna cook it. Kaya, Kaya, tea. All right guys, so I trimmed these up a little bit. We got some carrots in the oven. We got some peas on the oven. And thought I had more oil than this, but we're gonna put a little oil on them, rub them down, season them up. I got the camp shift set to th uh, 400 degrees. We're gonna do fast and hot today and uh, see how they turn out. Do a little salt, pepper, and some cr critter glitter red little Himalayan sea salt. The rider's hungry too. And a little pepper. What are you doing? And a little bit of Critter Glitter Red. I'm gonna do that on both sides and then uh, I'm gonna go put them on the old camp chef. <laughs> All right guys. Uh, the top round, top of round is not quite done yet, but I did pull the sirloin off and it is just a, well, it's not, it's actually just about right. That end piece is gonna be a little overdone, but let's do a little taste test on a Oryx sirloin. Flavor is delicious. My piece? Mmm. Yeah. One out of ten. Ten. It is delicious. Really Let me have that fork back. Uh, <laughs> I am gonna rate that as good as a beef steak. 
That is delicious. It is a little bit overcooked. Not pretty perfect though. Man, that's good. So, come over here. Peas and black pepper. It's my go-to, it's one of my favorite sides. And then we got some caramelized carrots going. So, uh, that's gonna end this video. Little Oryx uh, cooking, but we had a fun day at the ranch and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Stay tuned. Uh, I will be at the Western Expo. If y'all are going there, come say hi if you see me. Come by and I'd love to meet all you. So stay tuned, hit that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up, and remember, eat good.